uh, master class on fertility. What our focus is going to be on in this master class is mainly going to be male fertility. Um, there's going to be a couple of surprises as we go through uh, as far as the specificity we're going to talk about with male fertility versus female fertility. We are going to bring some of that in here too. So if you have a you're going to probably have a partner if you're watching this video, right? Because you got like male fertility. We don't just make our own babies out of our own bodies, right? So uh, she may be interested in watching this as well. Or if you are um, the, the female end of the couple trying to figure out conception and you want to share some things with your male partner, I think this video is also going to be for you. Uh, we have a couple experts here on the call today, uh, and we're all going to have kind of our own area of expertise that we're going to be discussing. Um, I'm sitting here with Amanda Sellers, who works here at Mama's Chiropractic. Uh, she's a functional medicine specialist. She's going to be talking a ton. She's my go-to person on nutrition. Um, Dr. Ashley Figueroa Melendez is our uh, chiropractor who, with me, uh, does the chiropractic portion of the work, and she's going to be talking a lot about chiropractic and the, the neurology behind subluxation and how that impacts uh, health. Uh, and health is, is going to be the, the way that we're going to talk about fertility today. And Dr. Danielle Dietrich, um, she is the person who is our kind of point person for all of our, our couples who are going through our fertility program. Um, the special, special thing that she brings into this conversation is conversations on stress, uh, mental and emotional aspects as well. Um, she's a whiz at understanding uh, female reproduction and, and normal cycles, uh, but the information that she has for this for male fertility is just as applicable. So. Um, what I'm going to be doing today is asking questions for uh, the three people here in the panel and also sharing some of what my experience has been, why we are really dedicated to this as a topic, and why we try to help uh, couples. So um, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Let's start with Amanda. You want to tell everybody a little bit about yourself and uh, uh, who you are and what you bring to the table? So I'm Amanda Sellers, as he said. Um, I have my functional medicine degree and tons of nutritional degrees. Um, and I've been in uh, chiropractic now for 15 years. Um, so I have a lot of experience as far as uh, what, what health does to our bodies and um, you know what we need to be doing on a daily basis as far as just overall general health, but then also specializing in certain areas. Um, you know, hormones and um, different diets for people, depending on lifestyles and whatnot, so. Cool, awesome, great introduction. Uh, Dr. Ashley. Hey, I'm Dr. Ashley, Fiero Melendez, like you said. Um, I went to a program like with the ACPA and I'm doing my master's in human uh, nutrition and functional medicine. So I'll be a colleague from Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, very good. Um, and Dr. Danielle. Hello all, I'm Dr. Danielle. I have um, a lot of additional training through the ICPA like we've talked about a few times. And um, part of what I really love about this process and working together like a team is like Dr. John had said, looking at these different areas of stress that is in our life and um, the ways that we can all complement each other in helping take care of people and make changes that really affect all of these areas um, and tying it all together between what we're putting in our body uh, nutrition wise and the kind of care that we're getting chiropractically as well. Fantastic. So yeah, we mentioned the ICPA, the International Chiropractic Pediatrics Association is the uh, organizing body that does a lot of the professional education for chiropractors, but also a lot of public education for the general public and understanding the, the role of I'm going to use the word salutogenic. So these are these are things that you can do every day to kind of build up your own health. Uh, you know the toast salute, you know to your health, um, and gen uh, the generation of that. So salutogenic principles are really where Dr. Marsha Schaefer fit into the ICPA. Um, I teach for the ICPA in their advanced perinatal class. So basically, uh, chiropractors get really excited about taking care of expecting moms or kids. They get really drooly about it when they talk about about that topic. They find their way into a training program, either as a student uh, at chiropractic college or uh, late in the game, like I did, uh, you know, after they've been out and they find the, their passion for it. Um, and then we go through a, a lot of classes. Um, even after you finish your certification, they're still adding more and more classes. Um, one of those classes I uh, was introduced to Dr. Marcia Schaefer, who has become a very dear friend of mine. 
And one of the things that I really loved about Marsha's process of helping couples who were declared medically infertile and how those couples ended up with babies uh, is her perspective in that same salutogenic paradigm. It's this idea that she had about nutrition where a lot of us had, had looked at nutrition as, oh, you have this problem, so let me give you this natural supplement, kind of like a medicine, uh, to take care of this problem. And her orientation to it was completely unlike anything I'd seen. It fit better with what our philosophy is a chiropractic about the body being intelligent and just giving it the right building blocks. And so we're going to talk about that specifically for men today, about what kind of building blocks your body needs. Um, and a lot of the stuff that we're going to be talking about as we look at couples is going to be based in Dr. Marsh's work. Um, but we also have some other special kind of ways that we look at how the body functions and uh, some, some of our own kind of special expertise that we use to, to help once we have that ecosystem established internally, then what? Then what are we looking for in the labs? So I guess my first question, everybody here has, has gone, through, uh, gone through some of this process. And um, Amanda, I'd love to know from your perspective, as we talk about nutrition, um, I'm a guy, I wanna have a baby. What kind of things should I be doing? Yeah, so um, I always tell people the simple, easy way about nutrition is shop the outer part of the grocery store. If you want to stick to more whole food diets and get rid of any of the processed things, um, I always tell people stick to like a whole 30 type diet, um, but uh, for more than 30 days, typically for, you know, three or four months. So that way with the preconception part of things to make sure that all those, um, you know, good cells are in the body and whatnot for the cellular rebuilding. Um, and nutrition is a big part of that. Just making sure you're getting all your nutrients that you need, um, you know, from as far as food and supplementation, uh, avoiding as much sugar as possible, um, gluten, dairy, which are high inflammatory foods that can uh, do a lot to the endocrine system. Um, just making sure you're just doing more whole foods. Um, and there's different ways you can do that. There's some people that choose to do like a vegan whole 30 or a vegetarian whole 30, just depending, um, on lifestyle at that point. So, so let me ask you a, a kind of follow up on that. I'm glad that you brought up the vegan and vegetarian, uh, portions of it, um, is I, I know for me, my body doesn't do great with soy. Um, I've noticed a difference in how my testosterone levels, not that I measured them like with lab work, but I just felt it like inside my body, which is kind of like, uh, well, I'll, I'll delve into that mm -hmm. later. But um, yeah, what's what's your opinion on on those kinds of diets and, and being careful about uh, things that could potentially be uh, endocrine disruptors or phytoestrogens or things like that? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of soy-based products at all, especially if you don't know where they're sourced from. There's a lot of GMO out there and that can do a lot of more harm than good to the body. Um, I tell people try to avoid soy as much as possible in their diets, just in general, but especially when they're trying to conceive just because it is, you know, an endocrine disruptor. Um, and just to try to find other methods as far as protein goes, um, you know, instead of the soy, there's a lot of different options out there now that, you know, are, a lot of things are um, like bean based for protein, like veggie burgers and stuff um, and whatnot, just really trying to limit as much soy as possible and it's hidden in a lot of different things so if you are buying some processed stuff still you got to look for that soy you know contained soy in there to really just make sure you're like really limiting as much as possible yeah i had a the, the first doctor i ever worked for jeremy dive told me that beer was going to increase my estrogen and i thought he was crazy I was like, no, there's nothing wrong with beer. What are you talking about? That's ridiculous. <laughs> I said, oh yeah, it, it just shoots your estrogen levels up. And it wasn't until like probably, ah, man, I started working for Germany in 2004. So it probably wasn't until like 10 years later that I actually ended up finding a study that showed that he was right. That the alcohol consumption, there's because of the process with your liver, it changes how your body uses cholesterol. Cholesterol is the base molecule for all of your sex hormones, whether it's testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, um, vitamin D is, is a big cofactor and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, it turns out that Germany was right about that. So uh, yeah, so be careful about what you're like, doing after after work too to, for relaxation besides we kind of, kind of want to stay hydrated anyway yeah talk about ph right mm -hmm. um so when, when people hear the conversation about what ph is what, what does that mean why is it important for your body 
just because you want to be more alkaline, you don't want to be too acidic because um, that can also do a lot more harm than good to your body. Um, the more alkaline you are, uh, the more everything in your body works the way it's supposed to. Um, and, you know, as far as better, healthier cells in your body, um, you know, you want to be more alkaline as far as dietary stuff, watching what you're eating, even down to water, um, different water sources, you know, um, are more alkaline versus acidic, depending on, uh, you know, what, if you're drinking out of, you know, plastic bottles or you're getting your, you know, source from, um, so yeah. Yeah. And, and the, 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 the other question that you have then obviously is, well, how do I know if I have an acidic, well, well pH is, if I can break down the, what, what the thing is, it's a, it's a scale, just like if you have your pool, right? You, you test the, the, the chemicals that you're testing inside your pool to see if stuff's going to grow in there or not. What you're doing is you're testing the amount of uh, acidity or alkalinity in that pool. And those little strips in there, when, when you're using those testing strips, they're calibrated for your pool. Um, what we actually found, I know there's a, there's a company, that's a super popular company, Hydrion, um, has as human physiological pH strips. And um, there's a couple of different times during the day that you can test your own pH by taking a strip and peeing on. Um, they usually say first, uh, the first void. So when you first wake up and you go, um, try to try to hit that strip. Or you know, you know, guys trying to pee in a cup. That one's kind of a <laughs> kind of a tricky one first thing in the morning. So yeah, see if you can hit your stream. Um, but that's the that's what we want to look at. Is it's not in your blood. It's in all the tissues around you. You ever heard that you're 70% water? Well, we're talking about the, all the water that's around your cells and inside your cells. It's called interstitial pH. And that range can really vary widely. Uh, your blood pH has to be really tightly regulated. That's only going to go just a little bit in, in a range. But your, your, your body's pH can, can vary by like, so the numbers themselves, like a change from a six to a seven isn't a change of, a, of an increment of one, it's a change of an increment of 10. So even if you're looking at, am I making big changes in what I'm doing with my body? If you're checking your pH and you're sitting at a 6.8 and you go up to a 7.0 with your pee strips, that's a massive change. It's like pulling the amount of you that is alkaline. Why is that even important? It's a good estimator for how well your body uses oxygen. Oxygen is gonna be really important in this process of creating good healthy sperm. And so if you have really good oxygen in your body, one of the ways that we can estimate that is by looking at how well your body carries it. Everybody's heard of like free radicals, right? Mm -hmm. And those free radicals are basically things that are you know, ripped your cells apart and create more inflammation. Well, that happens in an acidic environment. That acid inside your bloodstream is really carbon dioxide and it starts to rip apart cells so then it starts causing damage. If your body's exhaling more and it's pushing that carbon dioxide out, pushing the acid out, then it becomes more alkaline. And you need that for your semen. Uh, good alkaline semen helps to survive a longer time in the acidic environment of the vaginal canal. Uh, so if we're looking at being able to make a baby, we have to get your body that direction. So I guess the last question here is, what are things that you can do? You mentioned water. Are there anything that we might be accidentally eating or drinking that might make our body more acidic? Well, there's a lot of like waters out there on the market that claim that they're more alkaline and whatnot. Um, but then further testing shows that they're really not as alkaline as they say that they are. Um, the Kagan water system is like the best system to go as far as alkalinity um, for water. It is a little bit pricey, but it is well worth it. Um, food wise, it's just sticking to like those more whole foods. Um, the more that you taper off into processed foods, the more you're steering away from the alkalinity. Um, so it's really just trying to stick to that whole 30 diet. And even then, um, you know, it, it's not just about the food itself, but it's also getting rid of alcohol and there's different teas and stuff you can't drink because it causes you to be more acidic versus alkaline. So it's just, I mean, the whole 30 is basically the best way to go as far as trying to create more alkalinity in your body. Yeah. Also think about this. If, if Coca-Cola can clean off your battery terminals, you <laughs> probably don't want that inside your body. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but like pop is super acidic. 
Coffee. Oh man, that's a hard one for me because I love my coffee. I don't love my coffee as much as Danielle does. Danielle <laughs> loves, loves her coffee, but I really like coffee a lot. And and they say for every cup of coffee that you drink, like this is kind of the way to balance it out. You need, you know, to drink two glasses of water, not only because it's a diuretic, but it's because of that, you know, the acid alkaline balance. Listen, this isn't a forever thing. Okay. I'm not saying you can never, ever, 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 ever drink this stuff again. But in the time window we're talking about, which is, we're going to call it a cell cycle. It's usually going to be around 120 days or so. So in that phase one, as your body's trying to regenerate these sperm, really try hard. Um, it's, it's okay. You're human. You're going to make some mistakes here. But if part of what you've been diagnosed with is like uh, a motility problem or they're, they're being shaped kind of funny or um, we're, ha we're having issues with counts, then this is something that we need to address. And so that's, that's one of the easiest ways to do it. So thank you very much for that. Um, Dr. Ashley, how is adjusting a vertebra going to affect my sperm? How, how in the world those two things possibly connect? I get that question all the time from guys who come in my office. They're like, all right, my wife is here. She wants to have a baby. I want to have a baby. And, but what I don't get is why a chiropractor is going to change what happens down here. So do you mind uh, explaining the connection? Sure. Um, our jobs like the adjustment that we do our job is to remove those interference or subluxations in our spine and our nervous system uh, a subluxation or interference is blocking that communication like nerve communication that's going to our all our four organs and our reproductive organs so just giving like our brain uh, the ability to change and create health uh what does that mean is like our brain and our body are able to like perceive and support our immune system as well as those stressors that our body may receive by the environment or chemical like daniel will talk a little bit more later on so that's a really really important point so not only it's a, it's a two-way street right so not only is the brain trying to communicate into the testicles to say, okay, guys, let's go ahead and make the best cells we possibly can. But also your body's ability to perceive and adapt to stress or even chemical stressors. So let's say that you, you have a job where you're working with like bleach and stuff like that. How well does your body able to like take that stuff in and then push it out or defend itself against colds and flus and all that kind of things that can impact your health, right? That, that has something to do with, with chiropractic? Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, as, as we're talking about uh, the nerve system, um, I also hear that things like the endocrine system and the immune system and then the gut, that those are all interconnected too. How does the nerve system help direct those, those things as well? So our, uh, sorry, our nervous system is like the house power of our body. So our brain is all the time giving signals and like commands let's put it that way to all of our organs just so to create like a balanced body overall so everything's working like stable and healthy and as possible cool so so obviously the good communication is is really important to know that, that we've got like good communication in our bodies what are some of the ways that that you test to see if people have subluxations or not and how that's affected their body which what, what can i do uh, you know, while I'm watching this video to see, hey, listen, um, my body's working really well or not. So one of the ways, like as we do in the office, like you can put yourself like march in place and close your eyes and put like your, I'm going to demonstrate, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so you like march in place like this and you like put your arms in the front and you close your eyes and count like 50 steps just to see where your body, if it stays center, or if you walk half across your living room or turn to one side or the other. And you didn't knew you were moving. You swear you were in the same place. Get out of town. So you mean like people like literally will like walk into their own furniture when they do stuff like this? Oh okay, yeah, so, turn so make sure, all the way. <laughs> make, make sure you don't have everything around you. I don't want to get any angry uh, emails about, I tri I watched your video and I tripped over my chair because I'm <laughs> subluxated. Now I'm really subluxated. Oh, yeah. That's a dirty trick to get more patients. <laughs> I know. No, it's, it's, we call it yeah. like a zombie march at the office. 
Yeah, in all seriousness, like that's one of the biggest, like, like it's like the holy cow test for a lot of people when we're watching them here in the office and we have them do this. We we count to you know the doctors, we count to ourselves when we're doing that. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you gotta get out of the person's way, you know, because they're they're coming right for you. And you're like, wow. But then when you sit down and they open their you open your eyes and you're like, wow, how'd I end up that far? You know, there's obviously you thought you were in the right place. Like your brain has a map of where all your body parts are at all points in time, but that map can get screwy. It's all like the map is based off of whether the position sensors in all of your joints are communicating well to your brain. And what a great way to illustrate that. Um, so let me ask you the next question, Dr. Ashley, in your experience. Um, so once I get adjusted, they say that, you know, once you go to a chiropractor, you always have to keep on going back. Um, why doesn't the bone stay in place after, after you move it back in? I mean, huge popcorn sound, right? That should stick. Yeah. Why, why, do, why does it go back out? Uh, it has to be a lot of like their daily living, like the type, the exercises that are, they're doing, the um, nutrition that they have, their posture, or even like Amanda, I can mention like how much like omegas or fish oils they have on their body, because they're the building block of our ligament. So it's like, let's put a bicycle. You have a bicycle that is the chain is getting, it needs that oil. So our joints and articulations need that too. Mm. Cool. Good analogy. Yeah. All right. So um, if we're looking at, at other ways that we can stay healthy, and I, I think one of the things that, that I notice about my body is that when I'm stressed, when I'm working a lot, um, when you know family's not going good, or if I've got, uh, if I've got wolves chasing me, actually, I like when wolves chase me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here, so that's all fine. So that's a bad analogy. But like, like, like when I'm stressed, I noticed that my body works differently. Um, we were talking about nutrition earlier. One of the things that, that really flipped the switch for me about how important this is, like the, the vitamin D. Um, vitamin D is a sunshine vitamin, right? Uh, it has been in your milk since you were born. Um, like it is on that, like if you remember in school, if you had got the, the, the milk with like the red label on it, that was like the A and D milk. You still find it at the grocery store. Yeah. It's like vitamin D fortified milk, right? And so when we're looking at this kind of stuff, the reason they put that in there was originally because they were tying vitamin D in with bone health. So I always grew up thinking that vitamin D had everything to do with bones. In fact, the name for it, the scientific name for vitamin D, calcitonin, has a lot to do with its ability to capture calcium and move it into tissues like your bones. But what we didn't really quite understand at the time was how important vitamin D is to both your immune system and your endocrine system, where that little pyramid I was just illustrating with Dr. Ashley. I started supplementing with vitamin D. I, I, I remember the time when I moved to the sunshine state and I was like, cool, I'm going to get all the sunshine now. <laughs> and I'm always going to have sunshine and I don't have to worry about my vitamin D levels. Well, you can see I'm wearing pants right now. It's, it's like the end of June and I'm wearing pants. For the longest time while I was working here, I was wearing long sleeves too. So, because the fact is when you're a Floridian, it's hot and we don't like going outside when it's hot. You know, it's like 90 some degrees and then we have a thunderstorm, it's gonna be rainy, it's gonna be super humid. We're not walking around, it's like we stay indoors. And so we also turn up the AC. Like um, you go into a movie theater or go to a restaurant now, this is the time of year where you need your sweater because everybody <laughs> has their AC cranked to like 70 and it's freezing in it when you go indoors. So we just don't go outside, right? During the summertime, especially. And so I didn't think that I would need it until I realized that it's a possibility that I was vitamin D deficient. I wasn't testing my blood. There are blood tests that you can do to, to measure these kinds of things. And, and you know, that's part of the lab work that we'll do. But I just started taking vitamin D. Uh, I had an amount that I was supposed to take uh, based off of my body weight. And man, did some stuff start changing for me. Um, we start talking about testosterone. There's a lot of ways, guys, that you can kind of like tell if your testosterone levels are doing okay or not. Um, obviously, a lot of it has to do with arousal. Like if you're waking up like you're a 15 year old boy, right? Good sign for your testosterone. Um, if you if it takes you forever though to kind of ramp up that way, that's not a good sign for your testosterone. If you notice that you like hardly ever have to shave, not a great sign for your testosterone. But if you're like, man, I just shaved like this morning, what's going on already? Like good sign for, for because testosterone and growth hormone are really tied well together. Um, it's the reason why you see like women bodybuilders also in addition to probably taking some steroids, uh, they've re rebalanced their body. And so they're starting to grow body hair. 
that testosterone balance has a lot to do with that kind of thing. And so energy levels though, like the quality of your sleep, all of that kind of stuff really is, is a good reflection of how well your body's utilizing that hormone, your recovery from working out. I really love um, for, for building that kind of aspect. Like my undergraduate degree is in, is in exercise science. I actually had a certification to be a, a certified strength and conditioning specialist. So a big part of the work that we did when I was in college was helping to understand which lifts actually build growth hormone and, and build like testosterone in, in male athletes' bodies. That level testosterone for you, that growth hormone peaks at the age of 27. From there, it's all downhill unless you actively fight to rebuild that within the physiology of your body. And the way that your body asks to do that is not by being a desk jockey. It doesn't work. Like your body conforms to the conditions around it. And so if you sit and you sit and you sit, and what you get is a nice comfy body that's really easily molded to a chair, right? But if what you do is you lift and you move your body and you ask it to do hard things, your brain gets that signal that, oh, we need to preserve muscle mass. And so things like, I love CrossFit. I love CrossFit for men specifically, because what that does for you is it asks you to lift heavy things. It gets you to move your feelings. It gets you to move your body. It gets you to push on something heavy and really push and, and like punish yourself. You suffer a little bit when you do CrossFit. But the reason that you're doing it is it's in service to what your brain is going to do in recovery. What it does in recovery is it tries to figure out how to rebuild you. So you aren't just a pile of just dog poop for the next week, right? But if you're feeling like you are, if you do a workout like that and you are just sore forever, the chances are that your body doesn't have the materials that it needs for recovery. So that means you're probably acidic. It means that you probably need to supplement. We mentioned omega-3 fatty acids. That's great for rebuilding. Vitamin D is also critical for helping with your endocrine system and your hormone system. The last piece in there is understanding the, the glyconutrition piece, is understanding the, um, you know, it's why people will, will juice as a supplement. Think of like, if you ever hear us talking about juicing, guys, what we're talking about isn't a meal replacement. You don't have to worry that we're sitting there saying, oh, you got to skip your meals. What I do when I, like I juiced this morning, I had carrots and apples. Um, I juiced that, and that was kind of like my vitamin for the morning. Right. And then after that, I usually have something to eat around 10 o'clock or so. Like I always make sure that I'm still keeping my calorie intake up because catabolism, that's the ability that, uh, to, to break stuff down and anabolism, which is the ability to build things up are two different things. Your body's in this constant starvation mode. You know, a man can talk to you all day long about the benefits of intermittent fasting, right? But if your body's constantly in a starvation mode because you're going, 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 your brain switches into this fight or flight mode that really does not do well for the other part of your neurology, which is feed and breed. That's the other kind of clever name for the parasympathetic nerve system. Your parasympathetic nerve system exits the tops and the bottoms of your spine and it's not sending information out to those organs. They don't work the way they need to. And that's how stress can really impact your ability to reproduce constantly in that state of looking for wolves. I mean, I don't know if you knew this or not, but when I lived in Australia, I found a really interesting fact about kangaroos. <laughs> During droughts, kangaroos don't reproduce. They won't do it because there's a lack of food out there. And so their whole like reproduction system just kind of shuts down. So they don't make new babies because they know that making new babies creates a problem for the rest of the herd. And so like, that's, that's physiology. That's is your nerve system talking that if you are stressed out, you aren't going to be making a whole lot of little Johnny's running, around, right? Your body's ability to create good quality sperm is going to be interfered with because of that stress. And so that's really where Dr. Danielle comes in as an expert. So talk, talk to us a bit about, about ways that guys can, can either recognize this, whether or not they're stressed. Cause sometimes they're like the frog in the beaker and I'm like, what's going on? My body temperature, it's nice and hot tubby in here. Right. Um, when they do recognize that they're stressed, what can they do about it? Awesome. Um, yeah, what an important conversation to have, because I think stress is one of those things that there might be this false belief that we can get to a place of never being stressed. And that's just not true. Uh, stress is something that we're all going to be under in some degree on a daily basis. So it's really important that we have tools in hand to help us moderate the way that our body is taking on that stress and then responding to it. 
I think it's important to understand different types of stress that we're under as well. So be it physical stress, like we were just talking about uh, with CrossFit. Um, that's a, an example of some really good stress for our bodies, especially as males. Uh, you also need to consider a past history of maybe bad stress uh, physically to our bodies too. So we were all born and we all learned how to crawl and walk and uh, how to ride a bike even. All of those things are kind of good examples of little micro stresses that have happened to our bodies that we probably aren't very aware of now as adults um, in understanding how that could be connected to why maybe we're having some difficulty with the health and the quality of our sperm or why we're having difficulty conceiving. Those kind of micro stresses, if they aren't addressed by someone like a pediatric chiropractor as you are growing up, is going to put your body kind of off kilter for the majority of your life um, if you haven't been getting checked and taken care of. Uh, there's also chemical stress that we're under. Uh, we're talking about the quality of the food that we're putting into our body, the essential nutrients that we're taking as well to supplement uh, things that just aren't present in our foods anymore with the quality of the soil and the land that we're using. Um, it also has to do with the things that we're putting on our bodies too. So you can think of uh, a cologne that you're using, for an example. If you wouldn't spray that cologne into your mouth and eat it, I would suggest you not put it anywhere near your skin or on your body. Um, and that's really something uh, you can think of when it comes to lotions that you're using, products that you're using when you are in the shower, stuff that you're putting in your hair, uh, fragrances that you're smelling, be it the cologne like I talked about, or things that you're plugging into your walls or candles that you're using. All of those things contain um, what could be harmful substances in terms of uh, hormone regulation in our body. And just in general, it could really cause some upset in the way that our body's functioning and disrupt the way our body and our brain are communicating as well, which is really important. Uh, so we talked about physical stress, chemical stress, and then the emotional part of it too. I think it's something that doesn't get talked about enough is just the really the quality of our mental health as males and as females. Um, it just, it seems to be something that's missed that we don't understand. Uh, like you were talking about, Dr. John, if our, if our bodies are constantly thinking that we are under attack, be it because we are just sitting in a really bad patch of traffic and we're really angry about it, or we're actually being chased by something that could hurt us, we are not going to be releasing the hormones that we need to, to produce babies. And that's a pretty simple thing to understand. Um, we tend to be, it seems like most of us are walking around in this kind of low grade, moderate state of like a sympathetic tone in our body. We're feeling like we're under attack all the time, whether it's true or not true, our brain doesn't know it, but it's surely releasing the stress hormones that are going to make our body think that we're under attack. And again, it's just, it, we're literally putting ourselves into a state of physiology that does not support us making more babies, especially not creating healthier sperm cells to be released to create healthy babies too. So if we haven't, if we don't have those systems in place to check our physical stress, the chemical stress and the emotional stress that we're under, how are we going to know if we're pretty off kilter um, in any of those areas to make those corrections or at least get started on it? Great. And you have, um, you introduced me to a piece of technology as well that, that might be really helpful for people to understand this because mm -hmm. like you said, it's for some, sometimes we're just used to it, right? We're just used to working the, the 12 hour days. We're just used to, you know, all those kinds of demands that, that are on our shoulders. Uh, sometimes you're the, you're the provider for the family. Sometimes it's just kind of like culturally what your dad did and what your grandpa did and they just kind of worked themselves into this right we definitely have a work style in america especially amongst men um if you're going to look at and it's how do i know like if i'm stressed or not is there anything that we can use for for feedback um any kind of devices or anything like that on the market that might be useful yeah absolutely so you can uh see on my wrist here this is uh, the piece of technology i'm the most familiar with right now it's called a bio strap uh, so this is something that I wear and I know uh, plenty of other men and women that wear it as well. That's going to monitor various aspects about 
your body, uh, be it your heart rate variability, your respiration rate, uh, your heart rate and rhythm, um, all of those things it's going to kind of take together and it gives you very simply put a recovery score every day. And I think that's what I like the most about it is that after it's been able to look at the quality of your sleep the night before, it puts that information together and to give you this recovery score, which gives you a good idea as a consumer of maybe how you can structure your day to support the, the kind of physiology that you already have going on. So say, for example, you're waking up and you have a pretty low recovery score in terms of deciding what kind of movement physically you're going to do that day to help feed your body. Uh, maybe the kind of foods that you're eating as well, be it something that might be more pro-inflammation versus uh, lowering inflammation. Um, and then really checking in with your mental health as well. I think all of those things can go into understanding, okay, I'm at a lower score today, what did yesterday look like? How can I respond to this today in a healthy, proactive way? But then what is it, you know, that I might need to be changing about how I have been uh, feeding my body or working my body so that in the future, I'm not necessarily waking up with these low recovery scores, which is telling me that my body just doesn't have what, what it needs to recover the way that I am expecting it to given the activity that I'm doing. Um, so I, lower recovery score, I would imagine is going to be found to be correlated with just lower health quality in general, which isn't necessarily conducive to uh, making a baby. And there's also a new piece of technology that we're researching and looking more at within the practice too called Aura Ring, which is a smaller uh, piece of equipment, not necessarily a big bracelet like this, but just something that can be worn on a finger. And that's going to monitor uh, very similar biometrics as well. Yeah, yeah, we had a really good conversation with um, one of the lead uh, researchers at University of California, San Diego, about their their project right now, looking at pregnancy using Aura Ring, and uh, really curious about couples in, in our area who are looking at preconception, if that's something that we can use um, and get really good, inf meaningful information from them with that too. It's a uh, one of a kind uh, first kind of uh, project like that within chiropractic, so pretty excited about it. Um, yeah, thanks. Because I mean, if there's anything that guys universally like, it's tools. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything that we universally don't like, it's the smelly candles. So thanks for also giving a shout out to not using all the, all, yeah. the, all the frequencies. You're welcome. I mean, there's good, I'm sure there's great ways that you can have good smelly candles in your house. I'm sure there's very, <laughs> Plenty very, of very yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there is. So, but yeah, the, we, we do need to be conscious of those kinds of things because, you know, these, these little micro cuts uh, over a period of time, you will end up to, to big damage on the inside of your body. And so um, being able to, to heal from that, be able to recover from that. You know, the reason that chiropractors even care about this stuff to begin with is that, you know, we're looking out there at, at health paradigms, right? At, at how most people see their health. They see their health in terms of, um, well, I'm either sick or not sick. And that, that black and white kind of thinking really leaves them falling in the cracks when they're like, well, I feel healthy, but why aren't we having a baby? That was, that was where the situation was that uh, me and my, my, my ex-wife were in, where we thought we were fairly healthy people and we were trying and trying and trying and not conceiving. And um, so to be able to understand that, oh, well, there's a lot going on there. We were both very stressed people. We didn't have a great relationship. We actually didn't eat things that worked really well for our body. We drank a lot. There's there a lot of things that we had grown up thinking were just kind of common. Um, and, and, and this was kind of like our normal, right? Um, but they, they weren't healthy behaviors for us. And so to be able to understand that the second time around, um, you know, consciously taking care of better care of my body and, and kind of the experience that I had then for, for with Danielle and I having Charlie, uh, it's been a lightning, like it's just a sea change in, in, in the two. Um, you know, as far as, as the, the, the quality of, of kind of like that experience for me and not just like what I brought to the table as far as myself, right? I also mean like the quality of experience that I've had as a father, the quality of experience that I could have had as, as, as a partner um, also was drastically different because I was connected on my insides. I wasn't like, I've been able to manage my stress differently. I've been able to, to exercise differently. I've been able to do a lot of things that... I learned through chiropractic and kind of these salutogenic principles are these things that you can do to build yourself up. It's not just about getting adjusted. It's making sure I go to bed or 
or making sure that if I don't have a good night's sleep, that I understand that when I'm going forward in my day, making sure I eat because I forget sometimes. I forget to eat because I get busy. And so making sure that I'm committed to putting good things in my body, just a bunch of like quick snacky things, right? So, you know, when we're talking about the reasons for why we want men to understand this, this aspect of our protocol and our aspect of our, what we're doing to build your body, it's not to sit here and tell you what to do, right? Um, what we're trying to do is, is help you and help you the best way that we know how to, which is to empower you. You know, there's a, there's a lot of really good things that a lot of you are all doing. Um, a lot of times what you need, though, is a bit of a coach. And the reason that chiropractors care about this stuff is that we really believe that your body's intelligent. It's been talking and growing you since the time that you were conceived. And that intelligence inside your body is it's been communicating out to the rest of your body, continues to do that until you take your last breath. Um, there are things that are in our environment that interfere with that process. And so our job collectively here is to figure out ways to make you more resilient and adaptable to that so that when you decide it's time to, to start expanding your family, that your body doesn't become a barrier to that. So um, do you guys have any other final thoughts, uh, things that you wanted to, to say before we wrap up? I have a quick thought that we could uh maybe leave people with as far as some, I love questions. Uh, so some questions that you can maybe ask yourself if you're listening to this, either uh, males or partners as well. Um, something that I, like that we've talked a lot about within this conversation is just the importance of having healthy sperm and ways that we're improving the quality and the health of our sperm by lowering the stress in our body too. So in thinking through this three questions that you can ask yourself to see if there is maybe more for you to dive into and how this is affecting your health right now with the lifestyle choices that you're making. Um, how's the connection in your body? Are your brain and your body communicating well? The only way you're going to know that is if you're getting checked by a chiropractor to see if you have any misalignments in your spine, which is distorting that signal. You can also ask yourself, does my body have what it needs? Does it have those building blocks already in place, be it with the food that I'm eating, the essential uh, supplementation that I'm taking? Am I resting adequately or getting proper hydration? So does your body just have what it needs to be creating this uh, new healthy sperm? And then really asking yourself, how's the quality of your mental health? Are you thinking in a way that's making your body release stress hormones that are directly impacting your ability um, to create new healthy sperm as well? And that was awesome. Exactly right. Yep. Um, you know, once we go through the initial program, uh, that first phase with everybody, uh, at that point in time, that's when lab work starts to get really important because then we can dial in exactly if we have uh, some other issues. And that's where, where Amanda and where Dr. Ash is really starting to do some of her training in as well um, to, to figure out, okay, well, do we need to, to target in some supplementation recommendations? Uh, but really we've had a lot of success just, just going through these first parts of the protocol with couples that were told, Hey, listen, he's not producing. And so even like if we've had people who, you know, are, are, are down some parts, uh, able to still able to produce kids. So it's really, really cool to be able to see this together. Um, how, how all this stuff is coming together to start impacting our communities because man, it is, it's a big, big difference between being able to conceive these children through your own cells and through the biological way than, and try to put a bunch of artificial chemicals into somebody to try to make cells somehow fit together in a puzzle piece. And um, we take care of those babies too, the IVF uh, conceived babies. Uh, and I'll tell you, uh, quite honestly, they've got a lot more issues. It's, it's a tougher road for a lot of those kids. And uh, even though they've conceived and yay, we've got a baby and that's a miracle and it's, I would always celebrate right? Um, but it is different uh, for, for how their immune systems work, how their, their gut and their digestion works, and, and how they latch, and all that kind of thing. So the, the really, really focus for us is, is making really healthy people, right? Making healthy moms, healthy dads, so that they can conceive and, and have pregnancy be the byproduct of great health. So thank you guys very much for, for tuning in to this uh, master class that we're doing here on male fertility. If you have questions, always, you feel free to drop them in the comments. Uh, we share this out through Facebook, we share it through Instagram, we share it out through YouTube. So uh, we, we keep track on all those. You can email us at uh, Mama's Chiropractic. Um, you just use any of our names, right? We got a, Amanda at Mama's Chiropractic, Doc at Mama's Chiropractic, Dr. Ashley at Mama's Chiropractic, and Dr. Danielle at Mama's Chiropractic. She also answers to office at Mama's Chiropractic now. Um, yep. <laughs> and so, uh, or admin, we've got all these emails, all these ways. Reach out through, through, reach out through the social media or give yeah. us a call, 239-549-6262. And we'd be love, absolutely happy. Just, we'd love to help you out. So uh, until next time, I hope you all take great care.